A couple weeks back, I told you about some bombshell new reporting by TYT Investigates, which uncovered a plan by white police officers to use Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg's campaign donors in order to pressure him to remove South Bend's very first black police chief. The Buttigieg campaign accused the outlet of reporting rumors, but new documents contradict statements by Mayor Pete himself made about the controversy. Joining us with his new information and possible implication is TYT Investigates managing editor and executive producer Jonathan Larson. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning. Absolutely. Jonathan, could you just outline first your original report, what the allegations against Mayor Pete were, and then so what these new documents that you've uncovered reveal about this important story? So these tapes have been secret since they, their existence was first publicly reported back in 2012. And uh, it, what is known is that they uh, recorded white police officers in South Bend. It appears to have been an inadvertent recording, but the woman who heard them uh, made some statements suggesting that there was improprieties at the least. And so there's been a big mystery and controversy about them. And uh, she hasn't talked. The um, chief, the black police chief who was fired as a result of these tapes, he hasn't been speaking publicly. But we had we got access to some documents outlining what she says she heard on these tapes. And what she says she heard was police officers discussing a plan to use Buttigieg's donors, two big donors, to get Buttigieg to agree to get rid of the black chief once he took office in January of 2012. Now, the donors I spoke to for the previous story, they denied that this occurred. Uh, and the the documents themselves that I saw say that I, as of, I believe, April 2011, Buttigieg was not even aware of the plan, let alone the apparent motivation. And when we talk about the possibility of a racist motivation, one of the cops is quoted in these documents as saying, um, I'm paraphrasing, it'll be a fun time when all white people are in charge. Mm. They use a bonix, uh, according to the documents, they use a bonix when they talk about the black police chief. The new documents that we have now are redacted versions of the documents that we saw, sort of confirming their existence, con confirming their authenticity. But also, we now have uh, the deposition of Mike Schmuel, who is the current campaign manager for Buttigieg's presidential campaign and was Buttigieg's first chief of staff when he became mayor. And so what is revealed there? So, And just so people have the timeline straight, yeah. so these recordings were made before Mayor Pete was Mayor Pete, before he was elected. Um, they sort of come to light in the beginning of his tenure. Uh, he ends up very controversially firing the city's first black police chief. And this has been a source of, of a lot of questions and controversy in South Bend. It's, it's emerged on the national stage as well. No one has ever known what was on the recordings. But you got your hands on an officer's report basically saying part of what was on the recordings was these white police officers scheming to use what they call Pete's money people to pressure him to get rid of the black police chief. Now, he, of course, says that's not why he got rid of the black police chief at all. The donors in question deny that, you know, deny that they put pressure on him on this in this manner. But that's what was on the recordings. Now you have new documents that seem in other ways to conflict with what Mayor Pete has said on this issue. Explain that part. Well, so I should be clear that the Buttigieg campaign was quite clear with me that they do not see any conflicts here. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll explain why as appropriate as we get into it. But the, uh, the, the big one seems to be his claim, I didn't know what was on the tapes and I didn't ask what was on the tapes. In fact, the interrogatories of uh, Karen DePape, the woman who was fired for listening to them, indicates that lawyers acting on Buttigieg's behalf, both as mayor and as an individual who was being sued for firing DePape, they asked her 15 questions at least about very specifically, what did you hear on this tape? What did you hear on this tape? So uh, that would seem to conflict with both the whether that Buttigieg claimed he did not know and did not ask. Now, Buddha, here's Buttigieg's campaign's response. Their response is that because of the legal issues around these tapes and around the, the content of what was said on them, he took no part in the litigation and the lawyers kept him away from the, uh, the, the litigation process, including the information that came back. So that's mm -hmm. their explanation of why they could ask. And he could say, I don't even know if I can ask whether or not it legally holds up that a lawyer can't tell the client information that might help them participate in their defense. 
That's well, why, why would they be able to ask and him not ask? That's the part that doesn't make sense to me. I, don't, I can't explain that reasoning. Yeah. Well, so, Jonathan, just explain, I mean, why does this matter, like, at, at its crux? What, what is it about his particular record here that he's running on that this conflicts with, this story? So why it matters depends on a lot of things, including who you are and how you think of him mm -hmm. and whether you live in South Bend or whether you're considering voting for him nationally. Um, so I don't, I, I'm not super comfortable, but there, there are issues about, uh, around race and the governance of the South Bend Police Force, certainly that came to light with the shooting of Eric Logan by the South Bend Police Force over the summer uh, on Father's Day. So right. I've covered other issues regarding other controversies. And then there are issues of how forthcoming he's been on some of these matters. When he said, he has said things like um, he fired Boykins, the chief, because he learned about the investigation from the FBI, not from his own chief. Well, according to Shmuel's testimony, he learned from the cops about the accusation of wiretapping before the FBI even knew about it. And then he told Buttigieg. So according to Shmuel's own deposition, Buttigieg appears to have known about this investigation, or at least the possibility of it, before the feds did and before Boykins did. So the idea that Boykins was supposed to have come forward and told him about it, that's that's just one of the, yeah. the sort of pieces yeah. that we dive into in the piece. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and something that we've talked about on the show, I mean, people say, well, why are you covering this story? It seems in the weeds in South Bend, but that's literally the only, only record, record. <laughs> yeah. of, of Mayor Pete, you know, yeah. to sort of judge who he is as a public official, how he conducts himself, how he would, you know, handle an administration, and whether he's fundamentally being direct and completely straightforward with the American people, even at this point. Um, where do you think the story goes from here, Jonathan? What are the questions that remain for you, and what are you still chasing down? Well, back in April, I asked for uh, the mayor's 2011 campaign finance forms, which the county destroyed in accordance with state law. And I have yet to find out whether the Buttigieg campaign has copies of those or will release them. And that could shed light on who was, who were the powers that be that first got him into office, which might shed light on totally benign and laudable things, right? It's not necessarily a gotcha moment. It's just, how did you get into office? Who was behind you? Now, some of those donors, are implicated on on these in these documents as having had potentially ulterior motives of wanting to affect personnel changes at the police department. But we don't know how much money they gave because we still don't have those documents. That's just wow. that's just one instance. In terms of how it plays out, I think South Bend officials uh, and activists and so on are still sort of digesting what's what's coming out both in my previous report but also from Shmuel's deposition mm. uh, today so what where they take this and and how they handle it sort of remains to be seen that's their call right yeah. and i think you're right to point out this is fundamentally not even just about mayor pete it's a money and politics story mm. where whether or not these quote unquote money people unduly influence mayor pete just the appearance of that corruption can be problematic and corrosive in the running of a city and the running of a state and the running of a country. So I think that's an important element of the story. Jonathan, congratulations. You've been chasing this down. Nice work on this. And thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you both. Thank you. Very much appreciate it. Next on Rising, there are 134 days until the New Hampshire primary. And while that might seem like a lot of time, candidates are ramping up their pitches to win votes in the Granite State. Our conversation with New Hampshire journalist, friend of the show, Paul Steinhauser, next.